Hello everybody, I am Ashley Fields with Yard R Us and tonight we are going to be painting our pumpkin gnome. I'm so glad that you guys are here with me. Um, it has been, let's see, it's been a rainy week but we've ended up being dry towards the end so that's always been nice. Uh, we desperately needed the rain this week so I don't want to complain that it's been rainy because the weather that's come after the rain has been quite lovely, you guys. I hope y'all are enjoying the weather like I am. Hey, Debbie, I feel like a fall is here. It's right upon us. Hey, Carla, are you enjoying the weather too? Because the temperatures have been amazing. In fact, I got in the car this morning, uh, taking my daughter to school, and I turned on my seat warmers and the heater. <laughs> Uh, we don't get to do that in Texas very often, so anybody who's not from Texas, uh, you guys probably get to enjoy that often. Those of us that live in Texas, not so much. So, hey Donna, how are you doing, hun? <coughs> I, I apologize, y'all. I have been sick since Monday. Um, I Today was the first day that I didn't have the body aches, so... I actually was able to get a little bit of work done today. I'm not feeling 100%. I don't sound 100%. I think I sound worse than I feel, uh, but I'm still not quite, you know, where I need to be. So I had posted earlier about uh, a truck that is gonna be coming out this weekend. And um, I actually have to get my husband to bring everything out since I've been sick. I'm not gonna be coming to the store this week, um, you know, just for the safety of everybody. Uh, so my husband's going to be bringing out all the stuff that I've been working on. <laughs> Danae, you got the Rona, girl? <laughs> I think I have a cold. It's like allergies and cold crap Ugh, stuff. Excuse me. Forgive my language, you guys. Uh, you know, just generally just not feeling that great. But I haven't had a fever. A couple of days ago when I was feeling my worst, I checked, I checked my temperature and it was like 98.2. So, you know, I haven't had a fever. I'm just, uh feeling funky, you know, that time of year. All right, y'all, we're gonna go ahead and hop into it. So I have, I got my light turned down because whatever reason, I think it's the time of the day now that I'm going live and the sunlight that's coming in is getting a little darker. And so the lighting's just kind of off. I apologize for that. Uh, but here is the base of our gnome. So I did two coats of white as my prime. And then I came in and I did a light purple flesh uh, light orange, reindeer brown, gray, black, and of course that's, you know, purple, gray, black all down here. So what we're going to get started with is go ahead and we're going to start our shading on everything. And then uh, we'll move into our outlining and highlighting. So I hope everybody's doing good. I did go ahead and I just Windexed this right before I went live. So I'm good to go as far as my Windex is concerned. Um, anybody who has been watching us for a while, I'm trying to find where my beard blue is. I, apparently I don't have it over here. Oh, there it is. Um, anybody who's been watching us for a while, you guys know that we always use Windex, uh, whenever we start painting because that helps to clean off the top of our surface and get off any of the dust, po pollen, dirt, anything that's in the air that's going to, um, mess with the look of our paint. So. Uh, Danae says it's probably the weather change. I haven't felt great either, but just a stuffy nose and I think it's the weather. Uh, I love the, uh, I love the weather, but I think everybody got the gloomy, lazy feeling. Yes. Y'all, the first three days this week, Monday, Tuesday, and yesterday, I did not get out of bed. And that is not like me. I'm somebody who, I'm a bit addicted to work and I don't know how to turn work off sometimes and so I really overwork myself way too much and so uh, for me to lay in bed for three days straight that's you know I'm not feeling good anybody who knows me you gotta know I'm really not feeling good to be in bed for three days straight I'd never ever ever do that I just don't you know when you run your own business and um, your paycheck basically is really up to whether you're gonna do it or not. You know, you're gonna perform or not, produce or not. Uh, you tend to like to eat and pay your bills. So, you know, you get up and work. And um, it, honestly, sometimes it's really hard for me to even take a day off. And so for me to take three days off is almost unheard of, but that's just how you know that I've not been feeling great. So, um, you know, it's just been one of those things that all right, it knocks you down, but I said, okay, I was telling my mom, 
at least it kind of knocked me down when the weather was not good because anytime the weather's really rainy and has high humidity, I'm really not able to paint very much. So it kind of worked out. So me being sick with the crummy weather that we've had this week, it, was, it worked to my advantage. Um, I didn't miss out on too, too much. Hey Joyce, how are you doing, hon? Hope you're doing good. All right, y'all, I just started on my white and added a little bit of uh, my beard blue. And as far as the white goes, I am done on my shading with that. I'm going to go ahead and cap this and clean my brush and we're gonna grab our next color. So uh, this gnome has been popular this year as far as blanks and painted. I, I obviously sell these painted as well. <coughs> Excuse me. And I am out of the painted ones. And so I've been having to uh, work on doing some more to kinda get caught up. So I think the reason this guy turns out so cute is because we have uh, four different outline colors by the time we get finished with it. So it just has a, a really beautiful color palette on it. And I think that's why people like it so much. So I'm going to, let me just turn this light off. It is just looking funky. I'd rather just deal with the darkness. Maybe, I don't know, that still looks kind of funky too. Uh, huh. I don't know y'all. I think it's the time of day and the lighting that I have in here naturally. I don't care for the lighting right now. Even with the ring light, the ring light's almost too bright. But um, I'm just taking a little bit of shading orange over top of my light orange. I am using the Royal Gold um, Flat Wash. We call it a shader. It is a 16, number 16. And quite honestly, the number 16 is a little bit large. So if you don't, if you notice, I'm actually turning it sideways to get a thinner line out of it. I'm not actually using it at the full width that I normally would. So because that pumpkin is has very narrow lines in it, I'm not gonna add any shading swipes to it. I'm gonna leave it off um, because there's just not a whole lot of space in there. So I'll come in with some uh, red orange number 19 for my outline and then I'll come in with some white highlights and that pumpkin will look really good when we're done. Danae says light off. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, sometimes that light is just awesome and other times it's, it's almost just a bother. Uh, I think it just depends on kind of the time of day and how much light I have coming in. Okay, so let's see. I still need to, hmm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to shade colors and then kind of give them an opportunity to dry while I'm shading another color. So for instance, if I were to come in and shade the flesh tone right now because I just shaded that orange, I'm gonna grab some orange and it's gonna get pulled through. So let me switch to purple and try to give that orange a little bit of time to shade. This is my shading purple. And you guys, I'm always, whenever I'm shading, I'm loading only the corner. I don't load the entire brush. It's not completely full. If I was using a mop brush and doing base coating, my brush would be completely full. But when I'm shading, it's kind of opposite of that. So let me come up here. I'm just kind of button up to some of those lines I've already have. Y'all, I know I posted earlier um, a new fall pattern that we've got coming out in October. And before we get done with this tonight, or before I sign off of our live, please make sure and remind me to show you guys the sample. I painted a sample of it and it's so cute. I wanna show you guys. All right, I am just gonna shade the purple right down here on the bottom. Again, this is really perimeter shading and also following along with whatever lines are already there. I need to shade my flesh and my gray. And then I will move on to the outlining. Hey mom, how are you? <coughs> I'm gonna try really hard to get through our live without having to blow my nose, but I can't make any promises, y'all. Uh, I've been keeping toilet paper handy. It's just that 
time of year with all the yuckiness going around. Let's see. I got some dry spoons over here, so I'm just gonna use those to mix it up. I'm, they're dry, so if you see my spoon having shading brown on it, I'm not actually mixing shading brown in here. It's already dry. So I'm getting just a little bit of my shading flush. We're gonna come in here and just kind of do a little perimeter of that hand. <coughs> Excuse me. All righty, do a little bit on the nose. Let me see. I'm trying to, whenever, y'all, these um, larger pieces, this one I think is 28 inches tall, but these larger pieces are so difficult to stay in the frame. It does not work so easily. So I actually texted my husband this morning and I gave him a job this weekend. I said, hey, I need you to do some research on um, some different companies that we can go live with two different camera angles where there's an angle up top and then there's the angle in the front so that you guys can see directly like a bird's eye view of the pieces. I was trying to do some research on that this morning and I was watching these tutorial videos that are like over an hour long, trying to explain all of the stuff that you know these companies have to offer live streamers and I was uh, so overwhelmed and I have a squirrel brain so like you know I lose um, focus in like five minutes and then I'm off to something else <laughs> so I text Zach and I said babe uh, I got a job for you I need you to do some research for me because we've got to get better with the camera angles on these lives but I don't have uh, I guess the ability to sit down and really focus without you know, losing my head, going 10 million different ways to try to learn about these different things. So uh, Zach's gonna be helping me out this weekend and doing some research and hopefully in the next month or two, we'll get some better camera angles going and, and start using a service that'll help us um, do better streaming on here. I'm just adding a little bit of shading gray onto the gray. Shading gray is not actually a color inside of our palette. All I did to make this color is mix um, some gray and a little bit of black. That's it. So it's just to darken up that, that regular gray that we already have. You don't have gray at home. You could always make it with white and black. Make yourself a lighter gray for a base and make yourself a darker gray for a shade. And there is the shading on the gray. Okay, let me see, is all my shading done? Nope, I gotta get a little bit of um, brown on my, the stem of my pumpkin and then he's gonna be good. The stem of that pumpkin is so small that I'm not gonna do a perimeter shade. I'm actually gonna just come in with a swish line and that's all I'm gonna do for shading on that. So Carla says, uh, my husband, Mike, could help you with that. Carla, please send me some info, honey. Um, I've looked at a couple of different companies that can um, basically give us <clears throat> the ability to have two different camera angles as well as have like text up and links up whenever we go live. So it can say, hey, you know, this is Ashley Fields with Yard or Us and you can purchase this at this website or this is what we're doing today. And I really just like that ability um, to step up what we're doing and you know, like step away from our phones and our iPads and use something a little bit higher end, you know? Uh, one of these days, y'all. So there's StreamYard was one um, that I asked Zach to look into. And then there's another one, I can't remember the name of it. So I don't personally know anything about any of them because I really am doing as good as I can to just show up live and do it the right way. And I just learned how to turn my camera around. So y'all, I'm, <laughs> I'm still on the struggle bus with getting there. You know, but slowly but surely, we're gonna get there and we're gonna get even better. All right, so as far as all the shading on my gnome goes, it's done. So on my white, I did beard blue. On my gray, I did a mixture of gray and black. Purple is obviously shading purple. And my light orange is shading orange. So let me pull over, I have one that's already dry. I did go ahead and outline the pumpkin with red orange number 19. So you see you got the light orange, you got shading orange, and you have red orange. I also went ahead and outlined my beard 
with um, navy blue. The only reason I did that prior to this is because this has four different outline colors and it gets very difficult to get all that to be able to dry on a live and be able to really finish it out and make it look good on a live. So I did go ahead and just outline those two a little bit earlier and we're gonna finish it out together. So on my purple, my gray, and my black, I'm going to outline in black on my, excuse me, my reindeer brown and my flesh tones, I will outline in um, shading red. So I can tell this thing is kind of, it's sliding. It's not quite doing what I need it to, but we're gonna make the best of it, y'all. So how's everybody's week going? It's Thursday. I feel like uh, this week has kind of flown by. Perhaps that's because I spent most of it in bed, not feeling that great, but you know, it's always nice to kind of get through the week whenever you look up and you're like, wow, okay, it's already there. I'm already at the weekend. Okay, cool. I can do that. So I am ready for the weekend. I'm ready for some time with my family. We um, got to spend a lot of time together last weekend. Um, my daughter and I had a mommy daughter day on Saturday and got like a pedicure and all that stuff and went shopping. And so, uh, and, and we, then we all went to a wedding together Saturday night. And so after you have a nice, you know, family weekend, you get to spend a lot of time together. It's almost like when things go back to normal and everybody goes to work, I just miss my family even more than normal. And so I've been ready for the weekend. I don't know why this thing is just, Falling down slowly. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I am ready to spend some time with my peeps this weekend. We don't even have nothing planned. But I think that sometimes those make the best weekends. When you have nothing planned. And you just get to hang out at home with each other. Those are always nice. Alrighty. Going to come around the perimeter here. You guys, I load a ton of paint into my brush whenever I'm doing an outline. I start off with a lot of paint and my brush is very, very light. And then as I lose more paint, you'll see me bear down a little more and a little more and a little more. So it's one of those things that it just uh, takes a little time and a little practice. But... <coughs> Starting with a lot of paint and using a lot of paint is just kind of the way that we go. That's the way that we move on a, you know, rather quick basis. So let me spin it around. And we are going to just continue on with our outline. So some of these outline lines, you'll actually be touching other outline lines. So meaning where my beard is outlined with that navy blue, I'm actually coming right inside of where that outline is and outlining with black. So you can see the black outline right next to the navy outline. So that's what we kind of refer to as a double outline. Let me show you what I mean by that. You see the navy blue right there with the black and they're outlined right next to each other. I'm not coming over top of one another. I want to be able to see both of those colors. So I'm just kind of buttoned right up next to it and keeping in line with being able to have a variety of colors. Y'all outlining is one of those things that I used to not look forward to whenever I had first really started doing this and got kind of serious about yard art because it was something that was so, so hard for me. And now I'm like, I'm ready to outline. I love it. It's with the part that really starts to bring everything together and I just love seeing it. I don't know what is going on with this mount. I don't know y'all. <laughs> it just keeps falling. Why is it doing that? I think I need to readjust it. My mount is kind of tilting like the leaning tower of Pisa over here. Alrighty. All 
I'm doing right now is finishing up on that black, cleaning up some of these lines. And let me see, now's a perfect time to, if I have any imperfection on my shoes or any of the other black parts, it's, it's the perfect time to kind of clean that up while I already have my brush out. Now I'm just kind of looking over, double checking, making sure I'm good. I got a piece of hay up here at the top off my display behind me. Fix that. Okay, I'm gonna clean my brush out. Let me show it to you guys too. All right, so far, we need to get some outline on our hands, our nose, and the stalk of our pumpkin. So let me clean this brush. I'm gonna switch over to my shading red. Shading red is a tone that I always use on any of my brown tones as well as my flush tones. So it's a color that you'll see me outline any, any of those color palettes with. So like we did our Indian turkey the other day and we used a ton of shading red on that Indian turkey. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna do a little bit on my stem. The stem is very small. It doesn't have a lot of surface area to it. So I don't wanna kinda, I don't wanna get too much. I don't wanna get too thick with my lines. Just really a little bit. Come in here, excuse me, on my hands. If you don't care for the shading red as far as a flush outline, feel free to take your uh, shading flush and outline it with shading flush. Even though you're gonna shade with shading flush, by the time you outline with it as well, because you're gonna use a different brush, it'll actually come out a little bit of a darker color. So, you know, if that shading red on the flush tone is too dark, no worries, do the shading flush but with a script liner. And it'll give you a little bit of a darker tone on it, but not as dark as shading red. Carla says he is so cute. Thank you, Carla, you're so sweet. These gnomes, for whatever reason, this year has been the year of gnomes and they have been hot sellers pretty much all year round. It really started with um, Valentine's Day this year and the gnomes that I made for David Valentine's Day, I couldn't keep enough of them in stock and I would literally make them and bring them out to the store and everything I would bring out would already be sold, pre-sold. And so uh, I've been trying to stay on top of the gnomes this year to make sure that I have enough of them, but I'm currently out of this one at the store right now and I have some on order as well that are waiting to be delivered. So, all right guys, all of my outline is done. Really all I have left to do is to add some white. This camera is driving me insane. I don't understand. Ah, uh, so frustrating. Okay, my pumpkin is outlined in red orange number 19. My beard is outlined in navy blue number six. The rest of him is outlined in just regular black. And then now we're gonna come in, oh wait, hold on. The brown and the flesh is outlined with shading red. And now we're gonna come in with a little bit of white. Alrighty, let me get this. Y'all, anytime you guys see me using these two ounce cups, they already have water added to them. <coughs> Excuse me. They already have water added to them. Um, because my, my, <clears throat> my script liner is old, it is very worn out, worn in, you know, that sort of thing. I need to add more water to my paint because it helps me to get more fluid motions out of it. Those of you that have a newer brush, you're not gonna need so much water. So uh, those of you that are using something newer, start with a little bit, you could always add more. Me, because I know my brush well enough, I literally use it every day. Uh, I know how much water it needs, so I really kind of come in heavy with the water. Hey, Terry, how are you? I didn't even know you were in here, honey. Terry says, gnomes are the best. Thank you, honey. I'm so glad you like them. I love these guys too. I think they're so cute. Now, I kind of, I'm thinking right now out loud, I really should have filled in these eyes earlier because these are kind of hard to get right the first time, for me at least. Remember I've told y'all before, I don't do the best job at um, good circles. And so a lot of times I have to kind of clean up my circles after the fact. This might end up being one of them. Can I come in here a little bit, get my white in there. Ta -da! 
circle's a little funky, but I think we make it work. I think it looks okay. All right, now all of my legs are super duper wet. I'm gonna attempt to get a touch of white on them, but it might end up coming out more gray because they are so wet. Yeah, that's definitely coming out gray. Let me see. I'm gonna kind of offload. I'm, I wouldn't typically offload, but it's, I'm only offloading because I'm picking up a lot of black. And I don't want gray. All right, so just add a little bit of white wisp onto the legs of that spider, and that really helps. You guys, before I, um, or when I was actually painting this and trying to figure out what I wanted to do, I was drawing all kind of different mouths on the spider, not drawing, but you know, painting different mouths onto the spider. And they all look terrible. And I ended up painting over all of them. So that's why you don't see my spider with the mouth. You just see the eyes. Cause I attempted to give it a mouth and I didn't care for the way that it looked. Oh, Atlanta. This thing, y'all. Drive me bonkers. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting real close and personal. Okay, nope, still not working. I don't know. I think I need to disassemble and reassemble. Something ain't quite going right with my, my stand over here. All right, now we're gonna start adding a little bit of white to our gnome. The little arm pockets right here, little patches, on his um, elbows are still real wet, so that white is kind of coming out like a dark gray. That's not really what I want, so I would advise if you're doing this for you to wait until things are dry. Okay, a little bit of white. A little bit of white. Oh, some white. Push it up a little bit. Get a little on the shoe. Now, when I'm doing something like um, a white outline on something black, I'm barely pushing down. So I load my brush. I then offload my brush, okay? I don't have much in here. That might look like a lot to you guys, but it's not much to me. And then I kind of do a really light hand, almost like you're barely pushing down on there. And to me, that's what makes the black look the best is when you do it very, very light. So, let me flip it around. Ta-da! How cute is that? I love this little guy. I think he is adorable. Let me cap this white right quick before I spill it because I can just feel myself. All right, y'all. I started with two coats of white as my prime. I then came in and base coated uh, light orange. I think it's number 16. Uh, flesh, gray, black, and light purple. And then on top of that, I came in and shaded my flesh with shading flesh. I shaded my light orange with shading orange. I shaded my light purple with shading purple. And I shaded my gray with a mixture of gray and a little bit of black. And then I obviously outlined uh, my flesh tones and my brown tones. I used shading red on my outline. My pumpkin, I used red orange number 19. My beard, I used navy blue number six. And all the rest, I used black. So that is the look at our pumpkin gnome. He is super, super cute. I think he's adorable. Let's see, Pam, uh, Sandy, Carolyn, Phaedra, Danae. Everybody says they're so cute, super cute. Love it. Can't wait to finish mine. This funk needs to go. Honey, I hear you. I'm... I'm I want all this to just clear up and go away so I can get to feeling a lot better because this has not been um, quite the funnest week for me. Let's see. There we go. I'm trying to, I think it's because I moved my, um, I moved my stand the other day when we did our Zoom and maybe that's why I can't get it to work right now. I kind of need to reconfigure it and put it all back together. So Carla says, I want one. I'm coming to the store soon. Carla, I believe I'm out of the blanks on this one, but I am cutting some more. And Zach is going to be running to the store for me probably Saturday morning um, during the, or like during the morning time on Saturday to drop off all the blanks. Um, I'm not personally going to come. I'm going to keep my distance and stay in Conroe because I haven't been feeling good. So um, 
I, I suspect that he'll be there Saturday midday, but I'm gonna tell everybody Sunday midday just in case if something happens and he's not able to make it there Saturday morning. But Zach will be doing my drop off of all the blanks. I know I'm out of like triple stack pumpkins. I cut two sheets of those today. Um, the new truck that I showed you guys earlier, I cut four sheets of it today because uh, I just think it's so darn cute. So here's our new blank that uh, the tutorial for this one is only gonna be in the Academy in October, but everybody's welcome to purchase. Those in the Academy are just the only ones that are gonna get to have a live tutorial over this pattern. Um, but this is a new one that will be delivered this weekend as well. It is already loaded on Shopify underneath our fall blanks, so you can check it out there. And then um, the gnome, the triple stack pumpkins, the Indian turkey. Oh, what else, y'all? There's something else I'm out of. I can't think. But, I, uh, oh, the sugar skull. I know I'm out of those. All those are going to be replenished in stock this weekend. So my apologies that I'm out of them. Uh, give me a couple of days, and I'll get them to the store. So Danae says, so show us the painted one. Y'all, I have two different ones. Okay, so originally when I cut this pattern, I cut it with the font um, of, that's not the font of my painted pattern. Hold on. That's the wrong one. I didn't need to show you that one first. Originally, I cut it with this font, okay? This font is the font that I use on my painted version. But then when I cut it, notice my P's. That lettering did not come out quite right on my P's. Now, Whenever I engrave this, it literally engraves down into the piece so my letters come out crisp and beautiful and absolutely perfect. But then when I just etched it into there, it didn't look right. So I actually have five that are in this font. Uh, and then I changed this font to give you guys a more block letter font that uh, looks a little bit, it's a, it's a lot easier to paint, number one, but uh, the P's and everything, the letters come out a lot more crisp and clean. So you really have, these are two different ways. I obviously dry brush this version. Don't have to dry brush it, but you, you guys know me. I like dry brushing. I think it's cute. So I dry brush this version. And look, y'all, this pumpkin is the same design as the triple stack pumpkin. I literally cut it off of the triple stack pumpkin DXF and threw it onto this one. So uh, you guys are familiar with this pumpkin. Uh, so you got a dry brush look and, and most of the trucks are going to be in this font. This font, which is incorrect, but I do have five in this font. And um, I did this one plain. So whenever it comes time for our tutorial, you guys can help me decide whether you would rather do the plain regular shading look or if you would rather see the uh, dry brushed look. Uh, but that is my painted version. So I do have photos of both of these. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, after I get done off of here, I'll, I'll go ahead and hop on Shopify and I'll put the painted versions on Shopify as well underneath our, um, I keep saying Shopify. Y'all don't know what that means. On our website, <laughs> underneath the listing, I'll add these photos onto there. There is already a paint list on there with the colors shown that I already have on here. So let's see, Dan, uh, Pam and Debbie say dry brush. Y'all like the dry brush? Great. I love the dry brush too. It's so fun and it's so simple. I just love doing it. Uh, so this one, I want to say I'm actually doing it in the Academy on October 5th, I believe. Uh, don't quote me yet. But uh, I know it's an Academy tutorial and I know that I'll have this in the store more than likely Saturday midday, but I'm promising people Sunday midday just in case if Zach can't get down there um, you know, early on Saturday. So I hope you guys like that. Sandy, Joyce, Carla, everybody's loving the dry brush. Great. Then you know what? That's the exact tutorial we'll do. We'll do the dry brush tutorial. So those of you who have seen the, uh, welcome truck tutorial, really this one's the same exact thing, except with a triple stack pumpkin, except a single pumpkin in the bed of the truck. So those of you that aren't in, in the Academy, you can kind of piece together other tutorials to, be able to get that same look out of it. So thank y'all so much for joining me tonight. I'm sorry that I have just had a raspy, nasty voice and I've not been <coughs> feeling myself this week, but I'm hoping that next week will be better. And we are gonna get some blanks brought out this weekend. So my apologies for being out of that. Give us a couple of more days. Other than that, thank y'all so much for joining me tonight. I will see you guys Monday night in the Academy for our uh, Vampire Gnome tutorial. 
So thank you, Carla, Pam, Joyce. Thank you all so much for wishing me well. Um, lots of Mucinex and Flonase and cough drops and all the fun stuff. And you guys, I'll be back. I'll be back on the men before soon. So thank you all so much. Y'all have a good night. I'll see y'all Monday. Bye, everybody.